Canadian Campaholic here with an advice video today. Uh, one of my subscribers, Sheila, uh, posted a comment asking, would it um, be possible for us to do a video on what to look for if you're going to buy a used pop-up? Because we have no idea what to look for, we have a very limited budget, and we don't want to get ripped off. Absolutely, Sheila, it would be my pleasure to do that. Um, there is a condition, of course. I don't own a tent trailer anymore. After having one for over half a decade, we sold it. Those of you that are subscribers to my channel know that we now own a brand new travel trailer. However, I went through a very lengthy process when we looked at buying a tent trailer or a pop-up camper. And I worked very diligently to maintain our camper. And of course, I've gone through the process of selling a camper. So I know um, from both angles what that process can look like. So you're going to have to put up with me talking, um, but I've done my best to put together uh, some advice that I think will be uh, helpful. I realize there aren't going to be a lot of visuals, but hopefully um, this you will find this insightful and it will help you with your next uh, tent trailer purchase. Um, we're going to break the advice down into a few key areas. I'm going to give you high-level advice about what year you should look for and, and rough budgets. I'm going to talk about the exterior, things that you should look at on the outside of the trailer before you consider buying it. And then a little more detail on what to expect in the interior and what to look for. And then also some overall uh, technical considerations to kind of tie it all together. Now, first of all, a disclaimer, I am not a RV dealer. I am not an RV expert. I am simply someone who uh, had a passion for tent trailers still has a, a passion for camping, and um, as it is my passion, I've done a lot of research, um, a lot of work on tent trailers, so I'm hoping that my advice uh, will help you. So let's start off by the, the years. You know, if you're limited in your budget in terms of what you can purchase, then yes, you really want to look at a certain range of age of tent trailers, because unless they've been looked after by someone and they're immaculate, once they get past sort of 16 to 18 years old, that's when you start to see a lot of the failures kicking in. When we bought our trailer, it was a 1999 Palomino Yearling, and it was great for the first few years, but once it got up to um, about 16 plus years old, we noticed that the number of problems, small problems, but problems nonetheless that we were having, escalated. So my first piece of advice for you is don't go any older than about late 90s, 1999 at the very most, and if you can get into the sort of 2000s range, the better, but keep in mind that as soon as you get past that 2000 to 2001 threshold, the prices are, are going to escalate, but you want to be somewhere um, in that, that range. In terms of prices, uh, be suspicious of anything under $1,000. Uh, we sold our pop-up for about $950, but I was desperate to get rid of it quickly. Uh, it was in pretty great shape, and I have to say that when I put it on the online ad site for $950, uh, my goodness, I couldn't keep up. I, I had like 250 people coming at me aggressively to buy the trailer, and it sold very quickly. But $1,000 on the low end, um, if it's below $1,000, I would be very suspicious of it. If you see tent trailers and pop-up campers for four or $500, that usually means there's something substantially wrong with it, so I would be careful. Could be friend or relative, though, and if they're selling it to you and you trust them, that's a whole different story, but if you're going to do a private sale, um, anything below $1,000, I would be careful. Um, to keep a good base of comparison, it's currently February of 2018. Um, I checked online today, and here in Canada, a brand new Jayco tent trailer goes for anywhere between nine to $11,000. That's a brand new top of the line tent trailer with all the bells and whistles between nine and $11,000 Canadian before taxes. So with that in mind, I would say um, if you have a decent budget, you shouldn't really need to spend any more than about $3,000 on a trailer. Uh, when we got ours, we got it for about three and a half thousand. You could argue that was a little steep and I know private sellers may go a little lower than that. But I would say stay within that, that time range and uh, that price range. Let's talk about the exterior. The tricky thing about buying a tent trailer, especially if you're going to go private sale, is that you really need to see this thing in action. I don't mean like take it camping, but you need to be able to see it opened and you need to see it being closed. And I know myself, someone who was trying to sell a tent trailer, I opened it up and left it open. Um, because it was a pain in the butt to have to keep opening it and closing it, depending on people um, on if people were viewing it. 
But in terms of the exterior, one of the biggest things that you need to be mindful of and thinking of is the lift system. So the series of cables and pulleys and things that will actually lift the roof of the trailer, that's going to be a big key thing. If that doesn't work properly, not only could it be dangerous, but it could be very, very expensive to repair. If you get broken cables, if you get snapped pulleys, that's not good. Ideally, you would want the person that's selling it to demonstrate raising and lowering the roof, if at all possible. And when that's happening, you really want to watch the roof, make sure that it's raising and lowering level. If one corner is tipping a lot or it's really uneven, that could indicate that there's a pulley problem or a cable problem. Um, and how much noise is there? If it's creaking and groaning and grinding, that typically means it wasn't greased properly and it wasn't necessarily maintained. Although keep in mind, some older lift systems will be a little noisy. They're not going to be silent, but if it's really creaking and groaning under the strain, that's a concern. Um, and how hard is it to raise a lower it? Um, on our system, it was a Goshen lift system. There's uh, a couple of major types. Goshen stamping um, makes one of the more common ones. I, I can't recall what the other lift system is called. I apologize. Um, but there was a fair amount of effort required, but it wasn't tremendous strain. You weren't breaking your back. The other thing to consider is make sure when they're cranking it, they should be able to let go of the crank and it shouldn't go anywhere. If that sucker is spinning, that's dangerous. It means the, um, the brakes on the lift system aren't working properly. Don't buy it. But if they can crank it, and if you can crank it fairly easily, um, that's a good sign. I would recommend looking for tent trailers with the Goshen, that's G-O-S-H-E-N, that lift system. They tend to have fewer moving parts, they're more serviceable, they're less expensive if something does go wrong, and in my humble opinion, um, and all other opinions are welcome, I just feel the Goshen system is the better one to go with. Um, I've got a list here of, of campers that use it, uh, Dutchman campers from 1993 to 2003 used this. All Forest River pop-up campers since 1993 have used Goshen. Palomino since 1987. Uh, Rockwood and Flagstaff, a lot of their models since 1994 have used it. Uh, Scamper. Uh, Starcraft used Goshen up until 2008. I'm not sure about after that. Uh, Sunlight from the late 80s to the early 90s. Sylvan Sport has used it since 2008. And Viking, another uh, well-known brand, has used it since 1995. So... Those brands, uh, there's a lot of great ones in there. Dutchman is a great brand. Forest River makes some good stuff. Uh, Palomino is great. Um, Jayco is, is not a bad tent trailer. I don't know much about their lift system, but I, I wouldn't completely disqualify them. Um, other things to check on the exterior is the roof. Um, ABS plastic roofs, I would personally stay away from. I've seen too many instances where they crack and split and they're very hard to fix and maintain. Once you start getting water ingress, it's a nightmare. If you can get one that has an aluminum roof, I would really recommend that. But again, it depends on, on the condition. But regardless of the roof type, make sure that when it's closed or the roof is down, that you take a look at the seals, look for the caulking that they've used or the silicone. Um, make sure that there's... Um, no obvious signs of damage or punctures in the roof and make sure when it's closed does it look like everything sits nicely and there's no major gaps and everything seals because once that lid is closed and you've got that that rubber seal around it that's the only thing that's protecting the inside of the camper from having water um, get into it the other thing that you should check while you're looking at the exterior of the trailer is of course the tires and this is true pretty much for any rv uh, tire um, you want to check the dot uh, on the side of the tires, um, there's a, a number on the side wall of the tire that indicates the uh, year that it was made and the, the week in that year. There's 52 weeks in the year. I can't remember the order that it falls in, but if you look it up on Google, what DOT on tires is, um, that's very straightforward. And the reason you do this is that if you think about an RV or a tent trailer tire, it doesn't do as many miles as your car. With your car, typically the tread will wear out before the rest of the tire does, whereas on an RV, it's the opposite. Once they age, the, um, the rubber in the tire can start to break down, and you can start to get what is called weather checking, which is basically cracks, uh, small hairline cracks and breaks in the sidewall of the tire. Um, some people have said it looks a bit like if you get a muddy puddle that dries out and the mud cracks, it's similar to that. That's not a good sign. Um, I'm not sure what age tires really the maximum is. 
And if you guys know more about that, put some comments below. But I say anything over five years in terms of age of tire, you should probably think about a replacement. The thing is with a tent trailer is that if that tire does blow out, and that's ultimately where we're going with this, is if the tire explodes while you're driving, the force of the explosion can go up into the wheel well. And a lot of times the wheel wells and tent trailers are only plastic. And if the tire explodes, it's going to destroy that, that wheel well, cause all kinds of trouble and damage inside the trailer. But then when the trailer drops and hits the ground, you're going to have damage to uh, the hub and, and the uh, suspension and, and it goes on and on and on. Worst case, you yourself could be put in jeopardy. So I would say don't play around with tires just because the treads looks great. Um, check the date of it, check the sidewall, um, and when in doubt, maybe buy new tires. So that's the exterior. Let's now move on to the interior because this is where it gets a little more complicated. Um, there's two big things that you've got to watch out for, and if you've watched my winterization video, you'll be familiar with these. Uh, but water ingress or water damage uh, and mice, those are the two biggest enemies of a tent trailer, so those are things you want to look out for. Um, when you step into the trailer, the first thing I'm going to suggest to you, before you start looking, before you get all excited, close your eyes for a second and sniff, smell. Now, let's be honest, tent trailers are small. There might be a slightly musty odor, but I'm sure you can tell the difference between it just the air is a little stale and moldy or mildew. If you smell anything that's very damp, that's not a good sign. Once you notice there might be uh, mildew smells, or even if you don't, there's key things you should look at in the interior of the trailer. First things first, look up. Look at the ceiling. The ceilings in tent trailers are made up quite often of what's called Luon board. It's a very, very, very thin piece of uh, prefabricated wood that has almost like a, it's almost like a vinyl covering on it. It's that white sort of textured um, coating. Um, if any water has started to get in the ceiling, that Luon board will start to warp. It will start to sag. It may bubble in spots. It will discolor. That's not a good sign because if the water's got in, chances are there's mold up behind that ceiling. So be very careful of that. The other thing I've um, learned to do as well is quite often when there's different segments of the ceiling, they'll have a strip between them that's stapled up. Check the staples. If the staples are rusting, uh, if there's still staples and they're rusting, that usually means water's got in from behind and it's actually rusting the staple from the sort of inside of the roof out. That can also be a sign that, that water may have got in. Now keep in mind, in fairness to the seller, they may have had water get in and they've since addressed it by fixing the leak, but that's a little bit of a gamble uh, on your part, so be careful of that. Also look at the canvas or the tent material. If it's got a lot of black mildew all over the inside of it, um, that's something to be mindful of. Keep in mind, some people put their tent trailer away when it was raining, and if it gets warm, that can create mold and mildew on the inside of the canvas as well. It doesn't necessarily mean that there was a leak per se. It might mean that they didn't necessarily take care of it. There are mildew products that you can buy to clean that, but be careful because it can um, it could damage the vinyl, which is often on the outside of, of canvas material, especially on older trailers. Um, but it can also damage the waterproof uh, properties of um, some of the canvas that on our trailer, for example, in the tent. Most of the tenting material was canvas with a vinyl coating, but there were sections, the windows that unzip, that were an actual canvas. And we had to be careful if we ever cleaned it to make sure that we used a, a waterproofing spray uh, rated for canvas because in cleaning the mildew off, I guess what I'm trying to get at here is it can, it can cause leaks. But definitely look for black mold, um, look for you know um, that smell that you see inside of it. Those can be warning signs, so be careful. Um, also look at the floor. A lot of tent trailers and pop-up campers will have linoleum floors. And if a lot of water has got in, it can react with the glues and the adhesives and cause almost um, between a black and a purple stain to appear on the floor. So keep an eye out for that as well. Um, for a leak to get so bad that it's actually come in the roof and ended up on the floor, that's pretty serious. So take a look at the floor as well. And feel the floor. I didn't put this in my notes, but definitely feel the floor. You don't want a rotten floor in a tent trailer. Keep in mind, though, some tent trailers, the floor is made out of um, OSB, oriented strand board, I think it's called. Some people call it chipboard. 
Um, and it does have a little bit of flex in it. It does have a little bit of bounce when you walk across it. If it's spongy, super spongy and flexing, don't buy it. The floor is rotten. You don't want it. If there's a little bit of flex, that's sometimes okay. Our trailer, the, uh, the steel chassis or frame, there was a big gap in the middle of it. So when you walked across the floor, there was a little bit of springiness. But after I got up underneath and inspected it, there was no rot. It wasn't soft. But some trailers might, so be careful of that. Also check the bunk ends. Make sure that the beds slide in and out fairly easily. Get up underneath the beds when they're pulled out if you can. Check the wood under there. Make sure it's not soft or, or, or rotten because if you're going to sleep on that thing, you don't need uh, uh, it collapsing in the, the middle of the night. Um, other things to take a look at. Look at the cushions. Look at the mattresses. Be realistic, though, folks. If it's been used since the late 90s, early 2000s, there might be marks on the bed. There might be a little bit of stains here and there. Our tent trailer, when we sold it, had uh, nutty putty or silly putty stuck to it from my daughter. Uh, that was embarrassing. But anyway, um, but the cushions, you know, they should be fairly clean. There shouldn't be a lot of tears. There shouldn't be a lot of rips. Um, and you can easily reupholster that stuff anyway. And if the beds are not the greatest, you know, I'd always recommend that you look at maybe some memory foam. Um, but those are things that are a little easier to deal with. They're not structural, but definitely something to consider. Um, also check for holes. If you get mice in a trailer over the winter time, they can eat through the canvas. So take a look at it. Make sure there's no obvious rips, tears. Um, if there's weird holes that look like somebody's fired a shotgun at it, that's usually a sign that mice have got in. You want to stay away from that one, folks, because if mice have got in, they may have chewed the wiring. Uh, they may have dropped feces all in the inside of the trailer. Um, I would really, if you can, look it in the storage bays. Look for, for mouse uh, droppings, uh, because that can be very dangerous for your health. Um, so that's something to, to be mindful of as well. Um, the last thing I want, really want to say about the interior, I guess maybe it's the exterior as well, is check the box of the trailer. Check the actual structure of the trailer on the, the lower half. Because on some of the older trailers that are wood frame construction, when those bunk ends are, are stretched out, it can put a lot of pressure and stress on the frame of the trailer. Because if you think about it, when you extend the bed, the poles that you put in go down to the frame and it's like two levers pulling on that box of the bottom of the tent trailer. We actually had an instance where my wife and I were sleeping on the king size bed and in the middle of the night there was a massive bang because the front corner of the trailer had actually started to separate. It turned out when we inspected it that they had only used a couple of small screws to um, screw that part of the frame together and a couple of staples. There was no glue, there was no brackets, no nothing. And after 16, 17 years of the stress of um, the beds being out, it had actually separated the trailer apart. Now, we were able to glue it and screw it and bracket everything back together, but that was scary. I mean, that could have been catastrophic. If the front of the trailer had broken off, we could have been injured. So really take a look at it. When it's fully set up, does the door fit properly um, in, in the actual frame? Is Are there big gaps in the door? Does it look like it's it's bending and flexing? A certain amount of flexing is, is inevitable, but you want to be uh, mindful of that as you inspect it. In closing, uh, a couple of closing points here. Um, there are technical considerations that I'm not going to get into in this video. Uh, those are going to be things like the battery, the wiring, uh, the electrical converter, um, the gas system, the fridge. Uh, these are things you don't want to mess around with. If the gas system has a leak, it could be fatal. If the fridge doesn't work, you could lose a lot of food or get sick. Uh, if the battery or the wiring is no good, that could be dangerous as well. We purchased our pop-up camper from an RV dealer. Now, I realize if you're on a limited budget, that might cause a problem because sometimes RV dealers are going to charge a bit more. But at some point, you need to have someone inspect the wiring um, the plumbing if it has it, uh, as well as um, you know the, the, the electrical system in general, because these are things you don't want to mess with. Um, you should at some point probably test the water pump if it has one, make sure the taps and things are working. They can be serviced and fixed after the fact if, if need be. 
Um, but with gas and wiring, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a gas fitter. Um, I would hate for you to buy a trailer and have a, an accident or have a problem. So in our case, we bought our tent trailer from an RV dealer and they inspected the wiring. They did a, um, a, a leak test on the gas system and they made sure it was good to go. They wouldn't even let me take it off the lot until they had done that and, and certified it. So uh, my advice, guys, get a professional to do it, get an RV dealership to do it or have them recommend somebody. But those are things you, you really don't want to mess around with. So in closing, I realize that's a lot of information I've thrown at you in a very short space of time. Um, I would highly recommend the pop-up portal. Um, it is a messaging board online that has a lot of uh, really, really great advice. A lot of people like myself that have owned tent trailers uh, or own them currently and know a lot about it, sharing best practices. Some real great tips on there. Uh, anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please do give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And uh, hope you have a very great rest of your winter. And let's uh, look forward to the 2018 camping season. Goodbye.